When given a choice between science and belief, the masses will always choose belief. That's essentially what the great philosopher Gustav Le Bon said when he said, the masses have never thirsted after truth. They turn aside from evidence that is not to their taste, preferring to deify error, if error seduced them. Whoever can supply them with illusions is easily their master. Whoever attempts to destroy their illusions is always their victim. What that essentially means is people value belief over science, especially when it comes to, quote, mass opinion. Today, we're going to talk about why people overinflate their tires on their vehicles, and we're going to make it productive and constructive and show you how you can fix that problem. Welcome back to the channel everybody. Today we're going to talk about why people over inflate their tires. Now let's jump right in to talk about when does this happen. And the answer is pretty simple, and that's anytime you take your car anywhere for anything. So <laughs> unless you're doing anything yourself, if you go in for an oil change, whether it's from the dealer, the quick lube, or any uh, local mechanic, nine times out of 10, they will overinflate your tires. So anytime you take your car in anywhere, they overinflate your tires. So we're gonna discuss and discover and explore why that's the case. So why does it happen? And it comes down to two factors, and that is ignorance and myth or mythology. And when I say ignorance, I don't mean somebody's stupid or anything like that. I literally mean the definition of ignorance, which is not knowing. And when I say myth, we talk about just simply what people believe. As uh, Gustav uh, said, his quote said, people tend to create beliefs, value beliefs over sci more over science, and then even worse is that these beliefs, when injected into a crowd, end up proliferating, shall we say. They get even bigger, and they expand and multiply into a larger belief, and then it just spreads like wildfire, so to speak. So the idea behind overinflating tires is simply rooted in belief and ignorance. So let's start with ignorance. Let's go back to where your tire pressure should be, and that is what it says on the sticker. It doesn't matter what car you have, the correct tire pressure is what it says on the inside door jam on this Lexus GX460. It is 32 PSI. Now, so on the ignorance side of things, we have to understand why the engineers even made that number to begin with. And it comes down to a simple uh, analogy that I say. is what, If you overinflate your tires, it'll be like a basketball. It'll bounce up and down like a basketball. If you underinflate, it'll be like a deflated basketball. It'll just crash into the ground. If you have it at the proper air pressure, what they put on the door sticker, then you're going to have basically shock absorption with minimal rebound. In other words, it's going to soak up shocks without bouncing or crashing all over the place. Automotive engineers call that compliance. Where do they come up with this idea? They test it. They're scientists, automotive scientists that literally get their butts in cars, drive around, play around with tire pressures, and record what happens. Automotive engineers are also automotive scientists at, at the same time. And what I mean by scientists is scientists are the people that experiment, okay? And they see what works, what doesn't, by literally playing around, in this case with the tire pressures, driving around on different surfaces, and recording both what they feel and using instruments to record what they measure. Once they get those measurements, they can see what works, and that's, then they send that data off to engineers. And the engineers then make it fit in, uh, within whatever application they need to make it fit within. So that's where it comes from. So a lot of people don't understand. In other words, people who overflate, overinflate tires don't even understand what it is the tire is trying to do or what the engineer and the scientists were trying to accomplish by that 
PSI that they put on the door jam sticker. Once an individual understands that, oh, the automotive engineers came up with that number for a specific reason and they've tested it and it works uh, and they trust that, then if they understand that, then they will understand where the number came from on their door jam sticker, that it came from experimentation, from recording results, and uh, that's where that number comes from to achieve a set goal or a specific goal, which in the case of a car is uh, rider comfort, compliance, and safety. Unless you understand that, you won't understand what harm you could do by overinflating your tire. And so generally, when you take your car in for service, most people, unfortunately, who service those vehicles don't know, don't care, and they'll overinflate your tire because they're not in tune with why that value exists to begin with and the benefits of that and the downfalls of, of straying away from that number. Now, the downfalls, as mentioned earlier, are if you overinflate, it'll bounce all over the road. So that's basically going to be the main effect. In addition to that discomfort, wear and tear on your car, it'll make your tires wear un more uneven, and it will also um, be less safe because there's less tread on the road. So there's all sorts of bad things that can uh, come from overinflating your tires. But why does it happen? Well, we just talked about the ignorance. Now let's talk about the myth side of it, the myth side. So like Gustav said in his quote, it, it just becomes this thing that just gets uh, amplified over the course of, who knows, generations. And in the American culture, it's just a thing. People just, some people just believe at these service centers or whatever that the correct tire pressure is 40 PSI no matter what, or 45 PSI, or near the maximum limit um, that it says on the, the uh, sidewall of the tire. All of that, of course, is incorrect, but it does exist because there is a mythology that um, this is just how it's done. This is how we've always done it at this shop. This is how grandpa did it. This is how great grandpa did it. And so this is just the way. And the more people you get believing a myth, the bigger the myth gets. <laughs> so um, that's essentially it, myth and ignorance. So let's talk about some solutions. So in order to keep this productive and not just simply be a rant that, oh, some people don't get it right, they don't send their, you know, tire pressure wrong, <laughs> you know, they don't set, set their tire pressure right, they overinflate it when you take it. That's not what this is about. It's not a rant uh, video. Let's get to some solutions. So you know now that, you're, that the uh, tire pressure on your door jam is the correct pressure for safety, comfort, and wear. We know that if you take it pretty much anywhere, uh, out in the real world for service, it's going to be overinflated. So now that we know that, what is the solution? What can you do to fix that? And it's quite simple and quite easy to do if you're willing to impress in a simple air compressor. So air compressors are commercially available anywhere these days. They're relatively cheap and they're relatively reliable. So there's a lot of options out there and you can go out there, get an air compressor for yourself and even your neighbors if you want to share and just simply have your own compressor and this way you're able to adjust your own tire pressures on your own so if you do take it in for service and someone else overinflates your tires you can bring it back to your house let the air out and put the air in that you need and play around with the pressures until you get it right so that is pretty much the simple elegant solution to this problem it is important uh, for you to have an air compressor though so you can kind of take control of that because it is one of the the biggest things that when you take your car for service with someone else it's one of the biggest mistakes that they always make is over inflating your tires and nobody thinks it's a big deal but uh, you will see that if you set it down to the correct pressures you're gonna have the best ride the best traction the best grip the best tire uh, wearing all these good things. So get an air compressor, check your air um, frequently, and adjust as needed. It's as simple as that. Uh, but as far as the whys of why this happens, it's pretty much ignorance and mythology. Why that happens is a mystery. <laughs> but I don't think I'm the first person to uh, explore this. I know I'm not, of course. 
uh, as we as we learned, Gustave uh, Le Bon said it some over a hundred years ago. How you know science belief people tend to do belief. So you decide which one you are. I'm not telling you which is right and wrong, but. The scientific way is what they said on the sticker, and I think you'll be pleased. Get yourself an air compressor, and you'll be amazed at the difference. And you'll have more control over how your vehicle rides. You're going to get the fullest out of it. All these components are connected. Your tires connect to your suspension and everything else, the steering, the traction. It's all interconnected. So it starts with the tires because that's your first contact with the road. Those tires are not simply rubber bricks, they are rubber air springs that dampen, uh, rebound laterally out the sidewall when they compress. So they're very magical things and I think very important things <laughs> to experiencing your basic driving uh, experience. So <laughs> in other words, you're going to get the most satisfaction out of any car simply by setting the tire pressure to the door sticker. So if yours are off, try it and let me know what you think in the comments. If you found this video helpful, please remember to like and subscribe. Thank you and have a great, great day. And then they